So obviously Google, maybe you guys a little bit of trouble on Saturdays. What did they do to make things so difficult? What did they change up? Uh, there was a couple things on some third downs and some goal line stuff that was a little different. Uh, they traded two tight ends but left one back in the tackle spot, and that's when they got for a touchdown. Um, there was the one play where they ran, they, they threw a throwback to the tight end on a, a sprint out look. We worked that one all week. We just got caught with bad eyes, and uh, we cut the tight ends loose a couple times, two, three times, where we had guys cover on them and man to man. but. Just we had bad eyes for whatever reason, but you know, guys have been playing really good all year, and uh, really proud of the way they've played. Uh, so one game don't define you. So I think we'll bounce back and uh, just got to go back to work. And but I'm proud of them. It wasn't our best game, but we got to play better this week. When an offensive play caller gets it going the way he did the other day, and I'm sure you would agree he was pretty good. Um, what's going through your mind? I mean, it, it's not really the play calling as much as people think it is. When you cut guys loose and you're not playing with good eyes, it makes the play call look better. Uh, it's no different than if I blitz and an offensive tackle busts as a concept and they say, God, he's really eating them up. Well, you don't know if people are doing their job or not. So sometimes we look into things, but Brom is very good. We've gone against a bunch of good play callers this year. Norvell's a great play caller. Coach Brom's a great uh, play caller. Petrino's a great play caller. Uh, the guy that won for Clemson, won the Brawls Award last year, is a great play caller. So. Uh, it was more so us than anything, but they had a good scheme. Brahm's always a guy, he's going to have some tricks with him. You just don't know what tricks he's going to have. And uh, he had some good ones the other night, which was really good. But uh, it was more so us than anything. I just didn't think we were sharp. But uh, don't know why, but you know, you got to take it as a hit as a uh, defense coordinator. That's your job to try to get it stopped. And that's what we're working on this week, just trying to clean up some things and try to get better at what we do. When you look at the entire body of work this year, I mean, coming in with a new new group of guys that you've never worked with and stuff, I mean, you got to be pretty pleased. I am. I'm pleased with the coaches. I'm pleased with the players because I think we made a bunch of strides, you know. Uh, you know, when I was going home from the game, it felt like I gave up 50-something points. You know, you look back and gave up 38 points. You didn't play as well as you're supposed to. But it felt like we gave up 56. He just as a defensive coordinator. He kind of look at it and say, you know what? We actually played worse than we did against North Carolina, and North Carolina scored more points. So anytime you're at the end of the game, you see we got a chance to win like that. You know, we've we've won by a little bit this year, and we've lost by a little bit this year. So hopefully next year uh, we'll win a lot more by a little bit, and maybe even some bigger margins. But uh, what the guys have done here for us as coaches has been great this year, and uh, I'm pleased with it. And we just got to go out and get this last one for sure. And I don't know if you'll answer this honestly or not. <laughs> but, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> you're nominated for the Broyles Award, which is nice and everything. Right. Um, people are mentioning you for LSU. Mm -hmm. They're mentioning you for USC. I don't know if you've heard any of this chatter out there. You've been busy. Um, what is your mindset about being at Miami? And um, as you look into the future, you know, where are you at in your career? Well, I think you, you always want to be wanted. You know, um, those places that are talking that, uh, you know, I've got an agent, my agent hasn't told me anything about that. So it's just people chirping and talking. But, uh, you know, as the season's finished, uh, Coach Crystal Baum sure will sit down with me and we'll talk about next year's plan and what we'll do here at Miami. And uh, this is the job I have. I love it here. I think that we're building something special. So I'm not looking to go anywhere. I said it when I came here that this was a place that I was always intrigued at coming to to try to get this thing back to what it was. Um, you know, so to me, it's just talk, you know, until somebody picks up the phone and calls me, it's not real. I've got a job here at Miami. I love Miami. I love our players and we're recruiting some really good players and I want to be here at Miami because it's the job that I do have. So uh, there's always going to be speculations. Anytime anybody does anything good, there's people who are going to want them and that's just a part of it, you know, but the grass isn't always greener somewhere else. So, I love a pretty honest answer. Um, uh, uh, looking at looking at Boston College, uh, their quarterback Thomas Castellano is a very mobile guy. Uh, just in general, like a mobile quarterback like that, how much trouble does it give you guys? Well, you know, he's not only mobile, he's little, so it's hard to see him. You know, he's about five nine, five ten. He hides behind his lineman well. Uh, he's a football player for sure. You know, uh, he runs the ball really well. He can throw the ball. 
Uh, it starts with their offensive line. Though. They're big. They're going to get multiple offensive linemen on the line of scrimmage and try to bully us around a little bit. And then, of course, he got some good wide outs and the run back runs hard. So we got our challenge, of course. Uh, they'll try to run the ball on us, I imagine. Uh, do some bootlegs, try and get them out on the perimeter. So it's going to be a challenge. But uh, we had a good day of practice today. So I thought we bounced back really good. And I think our kids are excited, you know, to go up there and play and try to get this last one and see where we go in the bowl. Have you guys really like not had to expend a lot of effort in that regard? You know, the kids battling through all this adversity, losing is not fun. No. And yet they they, they kept coming back every week and they've really given you a lot of effort. Yeah, I, I think it's your approach, you know. Um, you gotta have a feel, you gotta have a pulse for the kids. You gotta have a feel like if they're playing really hard and you lose, or you're playing really hard and you win, uh, you've got to act a certain way as a coach, but sometimes when you're not really that good and they're giving you a lot of effort, but they're not good, you've got to be careful. You can't browbeat them. But if they're not giving you a lot of effort, that's what's, you know, you've got to play with great effort. You've got to play with great energy. And I think our kids have, you know, has it been perfect? No, it hasn't been perfect, but I haven't been perfect. There's some calls that I would like to get back, you know, especially going back to Georgia Tech. You know, I still think I should have pressured the guy. Uh, me as a coach, like, okay, if I make that call at the end of the game and we win, how does that affect our season going forward, you know? And uh, I think we do that as coaches, you know? You've got to do that. You've got to self-reflect. you got to look in the mirror. you got to take everything in, like, how can I give the kids a better chance to win? And I try to do that every week, and I fell short this past week as a coach. And if you don't look at it that way, then you're probably not in the right business. You don't need to point fingers. I'm going to take the blame for everything. Those kids are just trying to do whatever you teach them, and if they had bad eyes, then I need to teach them what I needed to teach. So uh, we'll get better this week, and we'll try to practice better and play better. Lance, how do you think this transition has gone from four down linemen, primarily speaking, to more three? Just what has it been like, your, your overall thoughts on it? Mean, it's, it's challenging, you know, because you're trying to put pieces in play, you know, and uh, of course you'd like to be four down, you'd like to be bigger, you'd like to do different things, have better pass rushers that are bigger pass rushers, but you're not, so you give up size, for speed. Um, so sometimes you don't fit the run as good, although I think we've done a good job this year. I think we're still in the top ten against the run, which at the beginning of the season we didn't think we had defensive linemen when they were healthy were big enough to stop the run, you know. So I think our kids done a good job, but every week it's a challenge. But it is what it is. It's, it's the guys that we got. And, you know, a lot of those linebackers play on special teams. So through the course of a game, they play a lot of snaps. And, uh, you know, I try to rotate some four down front, especially when they go big personnels. But when they go 11 and 10 personnel, I've got to go to the you know, the 3-3 three, three stat look, and that's just where we're at right now. And, uh, and you know, we just got to keep trying to scheme and keep trying to create ways to affect the quarterback and stop the run game. And that's a challenging thing. Yeah, we've seen some of the younger, we've seen Jaden in there recently, mm -hmm. uh, younger guys. Uh, some guys that we haven't seen as much, maybe a Popo, uh, I know he's a special mm -hmm. team, but are there younger guys within the program that you're hearing either scout team work, that you're encouraged by the progress they've made in this season? Yeah, I think all the young guys are doing really well. You see them playing on special teams. And when young backers are playing on special teams, that's a good sign. Because if you use them, that means they're able to make plays in games. It's just, you know, they, they've just learned what we were doing in, in fall camp, and now we're switching to all this other stuff. So they get reps in practice, but uh, in the course of a game, when you feel like you can't make a mistake, you don't want to do it with young people, you know because uh, sometimes that has set them back for a while. So we play the older guys as much as we can, but, um, you know, injuries present itself. We might have to play more than we know. You, you mentioned that, you know, you guys have played in a lot of close games this year. Uh, we've gone your way, some haven't. Um, what does the mindset of the defense have to be when you're in a lot of games intersected by a field goal or a touchdown? Well, I think you're building character. And especially you guys that are going to be coming back next year, they're going to have all those memories, whereas last year they got beat by big margins. So you're trying to break that when now you've lost by little margins, but you've won some by little margins. So hopefully the next year you win a lot of games and you win them by little margins. So you're on the other side of that. And then the next year, maybe you can win big. I actually saw a tweet that said that exact same thing, which is very true. When you're trying to change a culture and you come into a place that 
isn't the standard of what it's been. Sometimes it gets worse before better. And I think last year that's what it was. This year you see a lot closer games, whether we win or lose. The following year, you probably win a little bit more of those close games. And the next year, if you got the talent right, maybe you can win a lot more games by bigger margins. So I think we're on track for that. We're close, you know, anytime. I mean, we battled some good teams this year. Um, you know, took Florida State down to the wire and took Louisville down to the wire. And that's the two teams going to be playing for the conference championship. So I think we've closed the gap. The record really don't reflect how close we are, I don't think. Do a couple more. There are. Any of those young guys that you can mention are like really popping, looking like next year they're going to be able to step in and help you a lot? Uh, you know, the spring will be big. The spring is usually the most growth in a, in a young guy, especially a young guy that didn't come in in the spring semester, which we did have some come in the spring, and it got better over the summer. And a guy like Maine, who's really talented, I man, it looks like he's been playing forever. But some of the guys that came in this summer, this springtime is where they'll make the most gains because they get to go through the defense again and they start to play a little bit more carefree and really focusing on what the other side of the ball is doing and they'll play a lot faster. So the spring will make some big jumps, I think, with some of the young guys. And Wesley the same seems to have made progress as the year has gone on. Yeah. Is he getting to the point where you want him now? Would yeah. You feel more comfortable with him out there? Wesley's making a lot of plays, which is good. And, you know, in the in the spring, he didn't make as many plays. And then fall camp, but each week he's gotten better and better. Uh, so Wesley's been a big part of this uh, journey for us defensively, and I think he'll continue to get better and we'll get more solid linebacker play.